like I said, I don't say say this much, but I'm gonna apologize from the bottom of my heart for me and my brother uh, to the young generation because I feel as though we fell down, we fell our kids with the um, the drugs that we actually pumped in these neighborhoods, and um, there's a lot of lives that have been destroyed uh, behind our activities. There are over 117,000 gang members in the city of Chicago. So I can't sit here and glorify the things that we did because it was all wrong at the end of the day. Someone gets shot, which prompts someone else to pick up a gun. This same cycle repeats itself over and over. We broke up a lot of families and destroyed these kids' lives and all that. So we have to take responsibility. Put your guns down. The twins were well known. They were legendary. A lot of the crime that was going on, a lot of the drug dealing that was going on, they were intimately involved. I didn't know of him, but when he started telling me the stories, I was like, oh, wow, like you're the Bentley twin? Like, okay, I did hear of you, but I didn't know who he was. I pray to God I look my killer in his ass. Snatch his soul out his shirt, just take him for that. I'm known in Chicago and throughout a lot of states as the twin, or quote unquote, the Bentley twin, because of me and my twin brother, we drove Bentleys. That used to be my old barber shop right, well, there used to be the community barber shop right there. Everybody used to line up out here to get their haircuts, although I, I never had to stand in no line because of who I was or because of who my brother was. This way it all began, right here. Do you miss it? Actually, I don't miss it. I think I have a better life now. Don't have to watch my back from people like the police or the stick up man or just being a part of a, a game. So I feel like I'm free now. Me personally, I was in the game from the age of like 12 due to my twin brother already being a part of the gang itself. And my brother was hanging out with a different gang, which was called the Gangster Disciples. I was hanging with the Black Disciples. We were actually fighting the Gangster Disciples. So I had to tell my brother, hey, look, you have to pick a side. You know, If you're gonna stay over there, things can go bad for you. Stay out of the way, we gotta get out of here. I grew up out of the Calumet building, which is called, uh, which is on 62nd and Calumet. The building's gone now. This is our born and raised block, the BD's headquarters. We had good memories, bad memories. We lost a lot of good guys on this block. We cried a lot of tears on this block. Um, you know, we, we was poor. <clears throat> Super poor on, this, on block. this block. Our family was broken, you know what I'm saying? My father lived on one side of town, my mother was living in the projects. And my father's house, it was three meals, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And my mama's house, it was scuffed for four meals. So however we was able to get that meal, by all means, we was going to get that meal. Rather, we had to go in the store and, and I steal a pack of hot dogs and my brother steal a, a, a potato. I have a father that's from Africa. I wasn't used to living the kind of lifestyle my father was living. He was very, very strict. It was about books and school. I see my mom uh, selling drugs, was selling weed. I see my sister selling weed. So by me seeing my mom and them doing what they were doing as a kid, I picked up on what they were doing, I wanted to do. We sold the drugs from this, off this block. The police would come hitting the court block. We would run as kids, run up in the stairs, hide in other apartments, you know, wait till then we say all clear, and we come back downstairs, get back to it, you know. My first time going to jail, I cried like a baby. I took really good care of him in, in prison. I, I was buying him things like mink coats and mink hats to, to wear in prison. So it was pretty cool. Coming home, I felt like I was the man and I wanted to get my title back in the streets as far as being the man. 
until my second incarcerated. I official charges was money laundering, but after being incarcerated, the charges upgraded to a supersede indictment, which was a drug gang conspiracy. So go from riding Bentleys to a, a jail cell for me, it was like, wow, I'm actually locked up again because uh, when, they, when they locked me up, they put me in segregation because of the nature of the case and the nature of the power that I had. And I found out that my brother and my father was locked up and I was really concerned because my brother had never been in jail and uh, my father had never been in jail. My father was incarcerated for money laundering. He just knew we was young businessmen. That's what we always told him when we was young businessmen. It's because we actually had legit business with our names on it, you know, so uh, he didn't know what he was doing. We knew what we were doing. I'm originally from Muncie, Indiana, a little small town in the Midwest. We moved into one of the toughest areas in Chicago, the Woodlawn community on uh, 66 and King Drive. I believe that the church is the hope of the world. What greater place that needs that hope than a place that is experiencing high levels of crime, um, broken families, it needs the hope. But when the twins came out, you know, before they were incarcerated, they were making millions of dollars. And someone would say, well, what did we have to offer them uh, to make them not go back to the streets? And I tell people, one, offering them Jesus. That's first and foremost. Secondly, giving them an opportunity that they may have thought that they never even had. And that is to do something legal, do something legitimate, and at the same time, give back to the same community that they helped destroy. 2015, me coming home, I was lost. I'm gonna be honest, I just did 11 years of feds. I got some good street skills, but me coming home, my friends take me to the church. And I'm like, All right, who I meet? Like, you meeting the pastor? I'm like, I don't wanna talk to no pastor, bro. I just came home. They're like, no, you have to talk to him because he run a neighborhood now. I'm like, he don't run no neighborhood that I'm in. So me seeing the pastor, he was like, okay, um, I, heard, I, know, I know who you are, I heard a lot about you. Glad to see you home, but I'm the new sheriff in town. It was either go back to the streets and sell drugs or be with the pastor. So I got frustrated, I told the pastor, hey, sir, I can't do this. He said, I'm gonna tell you something, man. If you go back to the streets, don't call my phone, don't come around me, and you're not gonna do it in this neighborhood. Find your new neighborhood to do it in. So I'm like, man, who you think you're talking to? He said, I'm talking to you. And it kind of threw me back. I'm like, man, this dude talking to me like I'm a nobody. But just actually listening to him and understanding where he come from and helping me understand that everybody glorified me from being this so-called hero in the neighborhood. But in reality, uh, I really took my community down. As you can tell, I always follow his lead. I was like, wow, you know. My brother is engaging with a pastor. Like, how did that work? You know, um, all the things that we have done and, and, and encountered, that was kind of like hard for me to, to go and accept. So after being around him and the pastor, I, I grew into want to be a part of what they actually was doing. So it felt great, you know, to be on the other side. He has always told me the truth about everything. He's never hid anything about his lifestyle. He's 10 years older than me. So, <laughs> you know, look at what, even right now, people still think sometimes like, oh, you know, he's doing this or he's doing that because with his credit, my credit, we started business and we're able to do a lot of things that he's wanted to do. And again, the legit way. You know, becoming an Uber driver, I remember when I first started a job, I was like, oh man, I'm, I don't really like being a cab driver. But, uh, you know, after doing it for my first week, you know, five days later, I had a thousand dollars. And I was like, man, I had a thousand dollars a long time. Because you gotta understand, I was used to making two thousand dollars an hour. We really appreciate Uber for allowing us to even get on a platform. They do allow convicted felons on, on their platform as long as you don't have no violence in the cases well over seven years or longer. 
but they do know and see me and my brother and how we operate. Uh, we work seven days a week. When me and my brother made a decision like, hey, if we don't do this, we got to be the best Uber drivers in the world. Not just the state, we don't be the best Uber drivers in the world. We just, we, like I said, we just making sure that uh, we make the best out of life. And we also taking our experience and, and a job at this and work at this and, and taking it and giving it back to the community and let the kids know, listen man, we Uber drivers. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but we real, we real Uber drivers. If we're really gonna bring about transformation, we need real life examples. And what better examples to have than the twins? I mean, everyone knows them. Um, they have lots of influence. So to use that influence in a positive way helps us in uh, communicating our principles uh, and, and communicating hard work and self-responsibility and accountability. They are perfect role models uh, for the type of transformation we're trying to bring about. When did enough negative, you do some positive, it'll roll up down to the next person. So this is what they basically doing. Just like this is becoming a trend now. Now, like, he's a great role model for the neighborhood as well as him. Just because like, we from this community, everybody look down on us like we uh, don't have out. It's out. You just have to take what you got, deal with it for now, and work your way out. It's something you can give these kids is hope. Um, and in return, it's like a, um, it, it trickles down. So they in return might teach their younger sister or brother breaking generational curses. God working in mysterious ways. I would have never been a part of um, the pastor if I never went with my brother to come up here. So I had to, I had to make that choice. You know, I'm a child of God. I, I keep my faith and my high power. And I truly believe right now to this day you know, me and my brother, we 49 years old, and uh, we didn't get this far uh, by accident. We got this far through the grace of God, because our lifestyle from then to now was totally, totally different, you know? And I, like I said, I owe it all to my high power, because I'm a true believer in God. Yes, sir! You straight! You straight!